Hey guys, how is it going? And welcome to Season 1, Episode 1 of my Scrolls play. So, Scrolls is a new game via Mojang, and obviously they brought you Minecraft. So, I've been playing this for a day or two, it's only just came out, it's currently in beta, but you can buy if you uh, wish to play, which is pretty cool, the same as Minecraft. And basically there's a couple of reasons I started playing this. One was I was influenced via Minecraft, so Mojang bought something else out, I thought I'd check it out, why the hell not. Two, I'm a massive fan of card based games, I played a lot of Magicka. And I uh, played a lot of Magic, obviously, and I played a lot of, uh, can you believe it, Pokemon when I was a lot younger as well. And I played a lot of card games in between that. There's a few iOS games that are pretty decent out there as well. So I thought I'd give it a try and see what it's like, and I was happily surprised with how good this game actually is. And how much strategy there is involved in it, which is very nice. I do think the harder the game, better the game is. So, first things first, I'm not going to do a... Uh, I'm not going to do one of the ranked matches to start us off. We're just going to go with one of the trials matches as that's what I've been doing. You do get the option of a tutorial, obviously. A quick match will just throw you in. You can pick easy, medium or hard AI. And the trials basically are uh, very, very uh, weird games as they tend to get harder as it goes along. And within each difficulty, the AI that you're playing against gets certain buffs to start with, so it makes it a little bit harder for you. If we have a look at Barrage of Bunnies, which we'll do in a minute, uh, destroy three of your opponent's idols. We will get into that into a minute when we actually start. Your opponent begins the battle with three junkyards and three bunnies. <laughs> this could be pretty fun. <laughs> Alright, so let me explain this a little bit better. So, you start with a deck of cards, and you get to choose your faction when you start. This is best explained in the store. So when you start, you get to pick one of these decks. You get a growth, energy, or order. More are going to be coming along very soon, more factions. But at the minute, these are the three that are available in the beta. Now, I went for the energy. You get a pre-constructed pack, which is quite nice. Uh, gets you going and gives you a good idea of how to play the game. Obviously, you can mix and match cards as you go along in your deck builder. But at the minute, I'm going to stick with energy purely because these are the cards that I know. Uh, you can go ahead and buy different ones if you like. You gain gold from playing matches, and you can go ahead and buy these guys here separately if you choose to do choose to do so with your own money. Now, as we're in the store, let's explain the rest of it. So you can buy these guys every week. They're changed around. You can see here that I bought the Thunder Surge. The Thunder Surge is the only card on there that actually has the energy uh, construct to it. The other ones here, we have a little bit of the growth, more growth, more growth. Uh, order and growth. <laughs> they seem to like their growth, but I wanted this guy because it's the only one that I could buy. Now, you do get the choice of buying separate cards as well and scroll packs. So, you can buy a random scroll for 100 gold, which is not too bad. But obviously, you do get the chance of picking up a different faction. You can buy a scroll pack, which guarantees you one rare card and two uncommon cards. Pretty nice, but obviously, that is a random chance between the different factions themselves, the different uh, orders. Or you can buy a single card which is specific to a certain order. That is pretty much what I've been doing. Um, 175 gold will get me one scroll, um, which is a complete random pick. And that will go towards my energy pre-constructed pack. Now if we go into the deck builder, there is a few things that I want to change around for this match. This is my deck at the minute. We're going to load my Season 1 deck, which I've been playing with. And I think I'm going to change it a little bit because I did have a problem a minute ago in a game where I was getting my ass kicked because I just didn't have enough hard units. Now what I am going to go ahead and do is I'm going to remove this guy because I just don't ever use it and we're going to play you. Just a little bit extra power just in case, which is always good. Now you do have to have a minimum of 50 scrolls in your deck to be able to play. If you have less than that, you just won't be able to save your deck. So make sure you have 50 in there. Uh, you do want to keep a good amount of difference between creatures, spells, structures, and enchants. Now, that does depend on the side that you go with, the order that you play. Purely because some orders specialise in different talents. So, some orders will specialise in buffing creatures. Some will specialise in just having absolute ass tons of creatures. And my faction is more based towards a slow rolling but very powerful end game. So we slowly stride our way through, building towards things like these guys, the Iron Ogre, which has 7 attack and 7 health, which is quite nice. But we'll get into this more right now. So let's save that deck. We're going to keep it exactly the same, go into the arena, and we're going to do a trial. Let's do the next trial. This could be very fun, because I hate bunnies, and you'll find out soon, very, very soon. Going to use the Season 1 deck. 
Alright, so let me explain the board. So, it is a card game and a board game all in one, which is very nice. You start on the left-hand side, your enemy starts on the right-hand side. You have five of these structures here, of these monuments, and they all have ten health each. If two of your structures, or three of your structures die, then you lose the game. That is it. Simple as that. The same for your enemy. You have to destroy three of their totems to win the game. Now, when you start, you're given five cards at random from your deck. And obviously the card generation is random as you pick. Every time you play a turn or every go that you get, you gain yourself one additional card from your deck. Now when you start, you have two things that you can do every turn. Or you can decide which one you want to do, I guess. And the first thing you can do is you can see that the cards at the top have a energy cost, a growth cost. So you can see this has two, this has three. This bad boy has six, so it's a bit annoying that we got him first. Hey, but he's a good card because he automatically lets me kill a, an enemy target, which is quite nice. Um, but we need to start building up our growth, and you do this by killing off cards. Now, you can also do the separate one here, which is split cards. If you split a card, you will gain two cards from your deck, which is quite nice. So that way, you always keep a good hand of cards. You don't want to go running out. That is the worst thing you want to do. But to start, you want to go spending and uh, gaining yourself some growth. So let's see what we can get rid of. Now, I am actually going to get rid of this guy purely because his growth cost is six, and we are nowhere near the uh, that end game level to be able to do that. So we're going to get rid of him. And we're going to call that turn. So what did he do? Enchanted creature gains plus one attack, plus three health, and it's moved to... Wow. That isn't very good. So let me explain bunnies. Because <laughs> you're going to learn to hate bunnies. Bunnies. If bunny attack is zero, it will summon another bunny in an adjacent tile instead of attacking. So bunnies basically do zero damage, but they multiply. And uh, obviously that gets in the way from you attacking. If I placed an enemy, if I placed a unit here and attacked, we would go straight for the structure and do the damage that, that, enemy, that my unit does. Now, at the minute he has these structures in place. Structures are designed to stop you attacking uh, the enemy themselves, their totems. And that's also the same for them attacking your totems. Uh, but some do have buffs. So you can see here, rat creatures you control gain plus one health while junkyard is in play. Uh, these are beast and bunny, so they're not rat creatures, so that's not too bad. Uh, but they are going to start multiplying in two goes, so we do need to shoot them down very fast. So I'm going to spend you, and I'm going to bring out a gun automaton, and we're going to place him right there. Good times. Now, let's see what he does. <laughs> all the bunnies. He's playing all the bunnies. Right, so these guys are about to multiply, which is not very good. And I don't actually know where they, well, we can multiply there and there, I guess. That is uh, definitely not cool. And I have got to make my way through these. So let's have a look at what we can do. So we're going to we're gonna spend you, and we're going to bring out one of these guys. Yeah. Let's start wearing down these a little bit. He's going to do two damage, so we'll take two attacks to kill one of these guys off. Not too bad. What did he just do? <laughs> Pretty sure those bunnies did zero damage. He must have buffed them. All units you control gain plus two attack until the end of the turn. Yes, he did. He buffed them. And they did damage to my totems. That is not very nice. Alrighty. But, that means they didn't do zero damage, so it means they didn't multiply, which I guess is always good. So, let's start attacking these guys. So, if I play him down, he will attack before the bunny, which means we can at least get one of these guys out of the way. I am going to split you, and call that a turn. Once again, it's my turn, so we're going to attack. So, we're going to go for this guy here. Bring this down just a little bit, then he is going to attack. Now he has two cards, so hopefully he hasn't got a buff that's going to allow these guys to actually do damage again, because I'm actually only on one health with my uh, Gravelock Outcast. So, this guy I doubt is going to attack, so we could actually pretty much get rid of most of these at once. There we go. <laughs> Alright, 
So do we want to? We want to spend really. So I'm going to bring my growth up just a little bit more, and this guy's going to attack. So there we go. So we're starting to look a little bit better now. We're getting rid of these horrible bunnies. I can now actually place one of my own constructs, which is quite nice, one of my own structures, uh, which is known as a useless contraption, which is pretty much all he is. He is there to take four damage and neglect them from attacking my units or my totems, which is always good. Now, I do want to... He is going to attack. That is definite. So we're going to play that and get rid of him. So he now cannot attack. I'm going to... Hmm... I'm going to play you, because I don't want this guy to get hurt, because he does a lot of damage. So in case they play anything that can auto-attack, uh, that's going to neglect anything from that. I'm going to split you, and we're going to call that turn. These guys are now going to attack, so we're going to bring this down to six, and we're going to destroy this one. Good times. Alright. So... I could kill him off instantly, but he's not really too much of a problem. He only does one damage, and he can't multiply, so I'm alright with that. I'm going to play you, because this will allow me to add an additional growth. We're going to play you down here. There we go. Oh, he actually added... Gr oh, he added growth, not energy. Ah, right, there we go. So he actually adds... Huh. That's a very weird card. I guess... Hmm. I guess this is designed specifically when you want to start interacting with different yeah, different card types. Oh, fair enough. Well, at least we know that now. Alright. So, this guy is going to attack. We're going to destroy this one. That is fairly simple. So that's going to get rid of another one of his junkyards. What else can we do? So I want to split you. And we're going to bring out one of these guys because these guys are pretty cool. We're going to carry on focusing down their bottom towers, I think. Alright, so, now I'm actually quite a fan of the clock library, purely because, if I show you on here, when clock library's countdown becomes zero, clock library is sacrificed and you draw three scrolls, which is pretty nice, and he's got a health of five, so, being a structure is, uh, he's actually pretty good. So I could play him, so this guy is going to attack next, I'm going to move him across here, because I want to start getting rid of these guys, and, how much are you going to do, two damage. I would rather attack that, so we'll take that one out. The Aether Pump is pretty good, as every three turns he will do one damage, which is nice. So I'm going to play him up here. He has five health uh, hit points as well, which is nice. And we're going to split you, and we're going to leave that as a turn. So strategy-wise, when it comes to scrolls, there's a few strategies that you can take. There are a few, actually, uh, a few guides that are on the internet at the minute that I've read through, and some of them are pretty good. The main ones that I like is focusing certain totems, which is very good. So generally, you want to keep three of your totems safe. Um, you can afford to lose two, which isn't a problem. So if we had this whole area occupied with our minions, then we're going to be putting a lot of pressure on their three totems here. Obviously, if we can take their three totems, then we automatically win. So losing two totems isn't really the end of the world. Uh, there is also the... Um, Losing the middle totem. I read that if you lose the middle totem, everything becomes extremely hard. Uh, I haven't had that happen to me yet, but I can see why, because that means you then have a jump over to really do anything. So that could always become a bit of an issue. Now, I have got one of my best cards now, the Iron Ogre. This guy does 7 damage and has 7 health, but he has got a free turn cooldown. So he's a bit... Uh, he's beefy, but he takes his time to get going. Oh, nice. And we got another clock library. <laughs> hey. Sweet. Alright, so I'm going to play my clock. Actually, no. No, I'm not. I'm going to get rid of you, because I don't need you. And we are going... We're going to play you. Why not? There we go. Right. Very nice. What was that? Opponent's units move one step to a random adjacent empty tile. Ah, oh, so he just he moved all my enemies around. All my units. 
It's not too bad, I guess. All right, let's start applying some pressure to his top. So we're going to attack this now and do four damage. This guy is going to take this guy out, which I'm quite happy with, so I'm not... I'm happy with that. This guy is going to do one damage on the next go. So really, I just want to work on building up a bit more energy. So we'll do that. We're going to... Could play my Catapult of Goo. He's not actually that bad. He does one damage. Hmm. And we haven't gone into Lobbers yet, so let me explain Lobbers for you. So Lobbers cannot attack Totems. That is uh, straight out. What they can do, though, is you can see here that on the enemy's side, we've got these flashing tiles. Now, what this means is if I place this guy around, dependent on where I put him, he will attack all four of those tiles at once, doing one damage every two turns. So it's not too bad. You get a nice area of damage there, dependent on where you put him. And he has got four hit points as well. So I guess you could class him as a structure as well. Oh, he is. He's a structure of artillery, um, but you can use him as a bit of defense. So we'll place him right there. Why not? Kind of uh, helps the mid there. So it looks like they're trying to play a little bit more defensively, the uh, amazing AI. Obviously, we're still playing an easy one of these matches, so they will get harder as we go along. Uh, but I don't think I'll do the rest of those on camera. Once this one is up, we're then going to go on to ranked in the uh, next upcoming games. So this guy now is going to do one damage to all of these. Uh, this guy here actually heals itself every turn, so it's a bit of a uh, bugger to kill, but that's alright. We're going to finish off this structure now. This guy is going to attack this one. Yep. Yeah. Okay, right. So, all units with ranged or lobber attacks have their countdown decreased by two. So I could do that, and pretty much all of these are going to attack. Everyone is going to attack. I quite like that. So we're going to cast that, so we're all going to attack now. It's going to be pretty good. I'm going to keep you, because I do want you very soon. Oh, and he brings out the dreaded bunny again. <laughs> Alright, so. We've got another card. First thing I'm going to do with this card is I'm going to split you. See what we can get. So deal free damage to target unit. If the unit is destroyed, draw one scroll. So I'm going to kill you. Take another scroll. And we're going to leave that match there. There's not really much you can do. There's not really much I can do either. So he's now taken to sacrificing resources. Okay, so I'm going to move this guy back. We are going to focus. So this guy is now going to take this one out. There isn't really much else I can do. Uh, but we have got a nice amount of cards now, so... Let's bring out the bad boy. There we go. So this guy hits like a truck, and he has got Relentless as well. Relentless is basically if opponent blocking unit is destroyed, this creature will continue its attack. So, easy way is he does 7 damage. If there's something here with 3 hit points, obviously that's only going to take up 3 of his damage points, so he will then be left with 4. With those additional 4, he will carry on going through any of the other units that may be on that tile set, or he'll make his way to the structure. The totem, pretty much. So, let's... Play this, shall we? I think... We've pretty much got this game in the bag. Yeah, he sacrificed him for resources. He has no chance. Alright, so this guy's going to attack next. What are we going to do? I could bring some more cards out if I wish. Hmm. Let's bring out a Gravelock Elder, purely because he will buff up my other ones. So uh, other Gravelock creatures you gain, gain plus one attack and plus one health while Gravelock Elder is in play. So this guy here will then go to 3-4, I believe. What is that? Gravelock. Has he gone up? 3-2. Oh, there we go. Alright, 3-2. 
So what else do we want to do? Let's bring out a grave lock raider because we can. Split you. See if we get anything good. Nope. Let's call that turn. Gonna move you across. Gonna move you down. Take you out with him. To be totally honest, there isn't really much I can do now. We've pretty much got this game in the bag. I think I'm just gonna let it play out. More bunnies! <laughs> yep, game in the bag. Our uh, Mr. Go Mr. Iron Ogre is about to finish this one for us. In so much style. So much style. <laughs> Alright, so when you finish a game, you get yourself some gold, which is very nice. You do get additional gold for speed of completion, and uh, you get additional gold for the amount of totems that you destroy and the amount of totems that you lose as well is minus off of that so that's pretty decent you can see here that we did 39 damage to idols which is quite nice 30 40 units uh, we played 12 units he played seven so overall that was a very easy match but that was one of the easy games so there you go that is scrolls that is the first episode of my first series of uh, scrolls that we're going to be playing uh, i do want to go note as well that this is basically something i'm playing in my free time so you may see these episodes added on to the uh, regular daily episode. So don't be surprised if you see three or four episodes in a day. Purely because I don't want this to co uh, obviously mess up with any of the other uploads that we're currently doing for the series. This is just going to be something extra. So don't expect to see this daily. Or uh, it might be a few days till another one's out. But uh, we'll definitely be bringing them out as I'm playing it quite a bit. So uh, looking all good. Next game is going to be a ranked match. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a laugh and we're going to lose, but hey, that's all right. Actually, before we go, let's go to the store and buy some more cards and see what we get. All right, so that was rubbish. <laughs> let's try again. Hmm, I've got you. Magma pack. Doubles enchanted units attack. Enchanted unit is destroyed after attacking. Ah, right, I see. So we do double damage for that attack, but then we die. Fair enough. That's actually not that bad, but it's a, it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? It would have to be the... Uh, there would have to be... It would be a very hard time to call when you'd need to use that card, I think. Um, but it may get you out of a sticky predicament. Love it. All right, you guys, so that is that for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you soon for another one. Have a good one, and goodbye. <laughs>